Here we are, back for day number five of the service to purpose. The mission is you. Ooh, it has been an awesome week so far. I've gotten a lot of amazing messages, feedback, and comments from you. And really, it's, it's allowed me to kind of shift things a little bit for today's video. Um, as I look back on the process, like I said, my name is Brooks Holland, and my strength is seeing the greatness that's inside of you because I know all the ways that you will try to self-sabotage and fight it and not see it yourself. And this is something I did. I mean, it took me 25 years to really kind of get and grasp some of these concepts. And the biggest thing that I want you to know is right where you are today is absolutely perfect. And that's the other thing is, is as I started doing this challenge and started getting feedback from people, the biggest thing that I want to do is I want to meet you where you're at. And I just really want you to know that where you're at is perfect. If you have to watch the videos a couple times, you know, some of these things, it's going to take some repetition. And really the biggest thing that I want out of this challenge, one of the initial things that I want out of this for you is a new level of awareness. Because it's so funny, just like certain things that maybe we've seen motiv motivational speakers or we've seen the memes, like we quote unquote, we know. I mean, that was probably one of the worst things. That I already know that. I already know that. I already know that. But I wasn't really taking it in. I wasn't really embodying a lot of these things because I still wasn't to a place where I really and truly got it. And so that's really what I want. It's day five. I just want you to be... I want you to be okay and not rush it because that's one of the biggest mistakes that I've made all the time. Like you, you know, you start comparing yourself to others and where they're at. And one of my favorite quotes is comparison is the thief of joy. And that's so true because if you're always comparing yourself, you know, where you're at to somebody else, it's, you're just always going to feel behind and it's just, it's just not a good place to be. So that's really the big takeaway right now. Where you're at is absolutely perfect. I know you hear people, I know people used to say this to me right here, and I want to pull my hair out like, no, I'm not. I'm so far behind. There is no behind. And that was the thing. I really, it took me a long time to grasp this because one of the big pivotal moments in my life was getting dropped 13 days till graduation from Navy SEAL training. And it took me over 20 years to actually understand why that happened. I mean, I got to spend the first 20 years after that beating myself up, being a victim, you know, not taking action, being harder on myself than anybody else possibly could. But then it really finally landed that that incident was actually happening for me for a reason. And so it really gives me that nice sense of inner peace once I got that and I stopped just beating myself up left and right. You know, maybe you're guilty of that too. Maybe you talk to yourself worse than anybody else actually ever has. Because I know that that was me. I was so incredibly hard on myself for everything. Even the wins that I would have, I would knock, I would knock the wind out of my own sails, you know, so that I could be right. So what I really want you to know is you're at the perfect place stay consistent with these videos. There, I, my goal is to keep them about 10 minutes long at the maximum length. And it's going to be doing these things consistently and getting the reps. And the other reason why I wanted to do this type of video today is I just, I want to kind of set the stage. There's some work that we're going to get to do. And I always say like, it's simple, but it's not easy. But what I'm really going to do is I'm going to prepare you as much as possible so that this work is as painless as possible when you actually go and do it. Because a lot of times it's the anticipation of something that's actually worse than that, than that thing. And I'll give you a quick example for that. Back at the Naval Academy, Every semester, there was some there was some type of a test you had to do, and a lot of it because it's the Navy revolved around the water. So sometimes it was you had to swim 200 meters, things like that. But 
on, I believe it was either like sophomore or junior year, I forget because it's been 20 years for me. But one of the things that every single person has to do is jump off the 10 meter tower. Like, yes, the tower that you see in the Olympics with the 10 meters, every single person has to jump off of that. And if you don't jump off of that tower, you can't go home for any of the leaps. And since I was a swimmer, every day after school, I was at swim practice for two and a half hours. And the people that didn't jump off the tower, they had to go stand on top of the 10 meter tower until they jumped. And there was people that would literally stand on that top of that tower for 16, 18 weeks, basically an entire semester until it got time. You know, it was either Thanksgiving for some people and some people it was Christmas. And it's like, do you want to go home for Christmas? And they had to jump if they wanted to go home for Christmas. So eventually there was enough discomfort that faced them. Like, I don't want to sit at the Naval Academy by myself because I didn't jump off the 10 meter tower. And let's be honest, jumping off the 10 meter tower, you're talking about a second, 1.2 seconds, and then the whole thing is over. And so really when it comes to that, what happens is it's the anticipation, you know, it's what we make it up in our heads. But I would say 98 times out of 100, once people jumped off, the people that sat there every semester, because we'd see them every day, the whole swim team, because they would be standing on the 10 meter tower for our entire swim practice for a semester. They might not want to go up there and jump off again, but after they would do it, most people be like, that really wasn't so bad. Like, but yet they spent, let's just call it 10 hours a week standing on top of that. I mean, they, they spent a hundred, 150 plus hours basically stressing out and avoiding something that could have been over in less than two seconds. And really the same thing is going to apply here with some of the exercises that I'm going to have coming up for us. But basically the whole key is just like that 10 meter tower, there's no way over, under, around. The only thing you got to do is you got to go through. You have to jump off that 10 meter tower and you have to experience it for those two seconds. And what you're going to see is, is so many times in life, we're coming across these things that are like the 10 meter tower. They're something that literally we make it so much worse in our head and we psych ourselves out and we send ourselves that we will actually spend hundreds of hours, you know, stressing over something that could be over. And so really my goal is I want to get you as prepared as possible so that when it is time to jump off the 10 meter tower, okay, you might not jump immediately, but you're going to jump within a few minutes. You know, you're going to catch yourself and you're going to push through it because that's what I want to do. I don't want you to waste, you know, not just a hundred hours standing on a 10 meter tower. I don't want you to waste days, weeks, months, years, and decades of your life letting the fear or the story of something perceived when in reality, it's it's really not that bad. And the thing is, is I'm going to be here to help guide you through this process. So really, that's it. You're right where you're supposed to be. And just keep doing the work. Keep sticking to those core things every day, deciding, taking responsibility, getting your gallon of water in. Yes, you can add lemons, lemon juice, or cayenne pepper eating real natural foods, getting in an hour minimum of movement exercise every single day. And no smoking, no alcohol, no unprescribed Xanax, none of that stuff to numb because we want to have our senses for the work that we're going to be doing. We can't have these other things, you know, messing with that equation. So again, I'm here to help um, keep Keep the feedback, the comments, everything coming. It really helps me. If you're finding value in this, share it with somebody that could use it. Use the hashtag TMIY for the mission is you and also service, the number two, and then purpose. And um, that's it. Stay tuned for tomorrow. And, you know, there's a couple more things. And then we're really going to get in, you know, to really the first pillar of this. There's three pillars to this process. And we're going to get into the first pillar. And uh, I'm going to do my absolute best to prepare you so that you can have nothing but success. Have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow.